Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Amateur's Mind, one of your favorite series. Now it is back on the menu and today's topic is going to be endgames and even within the endgames we are mostly going to look at rook endings. So endgame technique with um, material and initiative, um, somewhat cliched, but that is going to be in the focus. We are going to have a look at two examples, both of them are from a student uh, same student who played both of these end games with the white pieces. The first one is already on the board. White played here in this position knight d6 and this is uh, the first thing that I would like to mention about this um, end game that very often I find that on lower level um, club level players tend to um, go for trades just as as a general concept when up material which we can claim that white is up in material although technically it's even but uh the queen side pawn mass for black is un entirely useless and white's four versus three on the king side is a dominant feature so trades we just go like yeah trade 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 and then we will win actually not quite because even though we are up material, there will be types of endgames that will be very easy to convert into a win. And there will be endgame types that will be harder to convert into a win. And generally speaking, rook endings are always tricky business. So knight d6, whilst is an okay move, should definitely not have been a number one priority. Especially if we realize that the c4 pawn is actually accessible via d2 as well as via d6. And so a move like rook d7, followed by rook d2, uh, sorry, knight d2, knight c4, would have been by far the cleanest way to go about this ending. Now that said, knight d6 is fine, let's just move on, because uh, the real message is going to come after this. So rook takes, king f8. Now at this point, it's very good to actually lean back like I am now, relax, and measure up the pros, which is quite a number of them we have, the cons we have none. So I should rather say, think about how we are going to um, attempt to convert this super advantageous endgame into a win without giving the least amount of hope for our opponent. And it's very important. Your mentality here is that I want to give them nothing, no hope whatsoever. And hope in endgames always always is a synonym in fact almost like replaceable word for counterplay so what you want to do here with white is to just go like no counterplay for you whatsoever now what would counterplay look like in an endgame like this very clear this rook being down here or here or here or here or here anywhere at all on this side of the board is counterplay with other words we want to deny the rook from penetrating. Currently we have only one open file and that's totally dominated by us. So our number one goal is to prevent files from opening up. We played king e3, which was correct. And after king e7, we played king e4, which was also correct. Our opponent played a4, an absolute waste of a move and the pass. We played king d5, which is still correct. However, after h5, it is a very good time to reflect on the situation. Because now, we can choose to take a pawn, which we did, by the way, in the game. But then comes f6 with some minor um, annoyances, although that still is completely winning. However, here we can actually come up with a plan that is going to win this game so beautifully cleanly that it's actually well worth the time investing. If you would like to figure out this plan, I encourage you to do so, otherwise I'm just going to show it to you now. So, what we want to do here, in order to make this not an effective plan at all, is to play f4. Note how, once again, black has no plans at all. Now, if f6 comes now, then I can shut the whole board down with e6, potentially with an f5 ceiling, but that's not necessary, and then rook d7 check, and once again, we just keep on moving forward, 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 whereas black can do absolutely nothing and we are still dominating every single open file which is the one and only d file. If they don't play f6 but they play a pass, we go f5. And once again, we are completely um, forcing black into utter 
passivity. Yes, after takes takes I'm contradicting myself because I have opened up a file, but consider now that the king has to go back to the back rank. Remember that this video is vastly about activity. Now that king is as passive passive as it gets, and now the rook can never ever penetrate without risking a back rank mate, which means that now I actually get to cherry pick the pawns at leisure and start pushing a pawn without having to worry about too much at all. And the white position is completely winning. Now instead, we went king c4, which is fine. But now after f6, things are a little bit uh, more complex than it should be. We played knight uh, rook d5, the correct move. Opponent plays king e6. And here we did something that uh, looked to me a little bit shaky at first sight, and indeed it was proving to be shaky. My thought here was that we should either play here f4 and retain the status quo without allowing black to any kind to play, or take this now. And after rook d8, we would take this, this, this. And when the rook comes in, we would also hunt down the a4 pawn. It's not pretty. I don't really like it anymore in the sense that it's not clean. But nonetheless, it's a super simple win. Like rook b5 is a winning move here. g4 is a winning move here. It got messy because now we have got a lot of separated pawns. Nonetheless, it's an easy win. So make no mistake, white wins. But again, converting this will take some time. That's what should have been done. Instead, just a little slip that we took on f6, which by the way is rather anti-principled because we are now trading pawns and allowing open files. And now we took, so rook g8 came. And there is this tiny difference, but these differences make a life of a difference in endgames, that in my version, the rook first went to d8, and then did it go to in or here. These are the two recommendations. Whereas in the game, the rook can immediately go to g8 and pick off this. So in contrast to my variation, we are going to actually have a similar line to what I showed you, where black already captured g3. So now the win will be made even harder. And actually here for some reason, which uh, I think is best described as time trouble, we went king d4, a very odd move. And tada, black is pretty much back in this game in the sense that there is a very realistic chance for black to score a draw. We took, rook takes f3, and according to the engine now we are down to um, point 0.3, whereas back here we were up to point, uh, sorry, 4.3. So we almost dropped the rook in value whilst munching on pawns. And uh, yeah, this endgame uh, should have been a draw, but luckily for us the opponent also played it rather poorly and uh, failed to capitalize on their chances. Uh, even this endgame looks quite drawable, although it's outside of the scope of the, the, uh, the uh, topic that I wanted to discuss with you, but I would like to show you a very exciting part of this endgame that was quite a, a comedy of errors in some ways, really. So here, it's uh, dead even. Okay, so check. Um, dead draw after m many moves, including rook e3 being the best, when if white defends the pawn, then rook e2, and uh, black is going to win the c pawn, which means that the game is a draw. Instead, black plays king c4, an instantly losing move after rook c2 check, and now if uh, the rook blocks, then we can actually take and then promote with a check, which um, is, uh, I think it's winnable actually, but... Um, yeah, it's definitely an incorrect move to play here, king c4. Um, check was missed. c6 was played. Now we are back to draw. Uh, but just check um, king here, check again. And when the king goes down to a2, multiple moves will do the job. King b4 is one of them. Rook b5 is another one. And the pawns will drop. Pretty nice. Actually, the, the most obvious line is probably this. Um... And then we are going to take with check and we are going to catch up with the pawn on uh, c7. So very, very nice uh, way to, to grab a draw. Uh, let me show you this because it's actually quite specky. So here, check, king, wherever uh, you go back, they get a queen. We take it, they check it down and uh, we get a queen of our own and the game is a draw.
So that would have been a nice way to draw it. Instead, <clears throat> however, black went for rook b1. Now white wins after rook c2 check. And no matter where the king goes, c7 wins next move. Game over. Instead, we took on f3 and here black has a beautiful, absolutely stunning um, draw. I wanted to show you this. Uh, rook b8 was how black lost the game, which is an awful move. Instead, check. And rook here is actually a mate threat. Whoopsie daisy. And if the pawn goes up to create a flight square for the king, then we've got check, check, and check. And perpetual check. Know that if the rook moves anywhere in this position for white, then we just go back for the check and white has to block. No way out. And that's a draw due to the activity of the black rook. This is how easy it is to throw white plus four in a rook ending, which is why I'm telling you that you need to be careful. And if you can help it, actually not to trade into it. And once you are in a rook ending, you must respect activity enormously. Another example um, is this rook ending. We are white. We played here f4, which is a bit of a iffy move. Rook d8. Very clearly black has the active rooks and problems will occur very soon. The rook's penetrated. Good choice. The, uh, the other rook is incoming now. And we end up in this utterly passive, miserable position where we have got two rooks absolutely doing bugger all and black has got all the activity. This is a really, really dark situation to be in. And in fact, white should have lost this position, but let's see what happened. King c7 was played, fine. Although h5 would have been the most thematic move, immediately sealing or fixing rather the weakness on g3, gluing the two rooks to it. King c7 was played, king c2 was played, and b5 was played. Now that is a really bad move there on many accounts. Uh, first and foremost, it's trading pawns when we are not meant to trade pawns when we are ahead in an endgame. Um, two, c4 pawn is actually a potential target in many variations. I will elaborate on that in a bit. And three, it actually opens up the c file, which surprisingly will be a very important potential avenue for the white rooks, bringing in activity. So black actually here creates play for white. The most beautiful example of how to win this was a5. Actually, we should have played h5, but I will show you this line anyway. King c5. Um, actually, no, this is the most beautiful example of how to hold it. So h5 would have been the right move followed by c5. I will get to that in a different uh, line. I want to show you here a, a remarkable idea for white. So if a5, h5, and as soon as possible, and this is the right mentality here for white, by the way, abandon the, the pawn here right away and find activity. And if they take, you take, you take, you give up the pawn, but the da active rook, and the draw is within range. I'm not saying it's a forced draw, but with this rook, looking at all the black pawns here, it's looking mighty good for white for a draw. So this is definitely our best chance, hands down. Um, the plan that I found for black that I found remarkably beautiful was h5, king c1 and c5. Now I found this at first counterintuitive because I thought that the king want to come, wants to come in here, but we saw that as soon as the king abandons uh, the guard of the d7 square, this rook d2 pawn sack idea becomes quite a pest. The winning plan is actually c5. And after white now has nothing but passing, so pass, pass, pass. Now the a pawn comes down all the way to a4 to separate this from this. And tada, here we go. Rook, either a3 or rook d4, both of them are fine, uh, is going to create a lot of awkward tension. Actually, it would have been the best way to demonstrate it here with, uh, actually, no, king c to rook d4 here. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. And now white is stuck. c4 is hanging, and if b3 then take, take, and rook back now is hitting two ways, and uh, black is going to be doing remarkably well in this end game. A lovely winning plan. Now let's see what happened in the game, because this is the most instructive thing um, that is about to come. We played b3. A5, king b2, the correct move, king b6. And as soon as I saw this, I'm like, yep, we've got the draw. 
And as soon as you see this, you should be reacting like that, too excited about the C file. And you just go like, take all my pawns on the king side, be my guest. Take it, bang, here, and instant draw. Because now the rooks have become ridiculously active. And in fact, we are threatening a, a perpetual check at the very least on the C file. So let me model that to you, just check. Obviously here is mate. So go back, check, 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 check till the cows come home, immediately a draw. The only de decent way to try to contest it is rook d7, so that uh, there is no dramas on the seventh rank and also there is no check on the seventh. However, rook check back and then rook c5 um, immediately allows the white rooks to pick on a target and score a pain free draw. The game instead ended, very sadly, with the king passing around to and fro and eventually um, black just took on b3. We traded down the rooks and of course this king and pawn ending is hopelessly lost. No matter how dead you are, by the way, absolutely doesn't matter how dead you are, the worst thing you can do in endgame scenarios like this is to trade down to king and pawn endings. Because that's unstuff up a ball. Like there is no way black can go wrong here. As long as you have got pieces on the board, there is hope they stuff up. A king and pawn ending of this kind is impossible to mess up because all they need to do is to walk their king here and eat your pawns. And no one will miss that. So that's just the last practical piece of wisdom. But the real beauty here would have been this awesome rook slide across, giving up the pawn and grabbing that initiative, which is so, so important in these rook ending scenarios when we are playing down for a draw. So I hope guys that this rather action and information packed two end games uh, will help you better understand and better play your end games. Please don't forget to comment, to sub, to like, do those YouTube things to help me and in return I will be back with more soon. Thanks for watching.